Thomas was on his way to the harbour with a trainload of metal pilings. They were needed to make the harbour wall firm and safe. Hello, Thomas, said Edward. This is Trevor, a friend of mine. He's a traction engine. Thomas eyed the newcomer doubtfully. A what engine, he asked. A traction engine, explained Trevor. I run on roads instead of rails. Can you take me to the harbour, please? The fat controller has a job for me. Yes, of course, replied Thomas, but he was still puzzled. Workmen coupled Trevor's truck to Thomas's train, and soon they were ready to start their journey. I'm glad the fat controller needs me, called Trevor. I don't have enough to do sometimes, you know. Although I can work anywhere, in orchards, on farms, in scrapyards, even at harbours. But you don't run on rails, puffed Thomas. I'm a traction engine. I don't need rails to be useful, replied Trevor. You wait and see. When they reached the harbour, they found everything in confusion. Trucks had been derailed, blocking the line, and stone slabs lay everywhere. We must get these pilings past, said Thomas's driver. They are essential. Trevor, we need you to drag them round this mess. Just the sort of job I like, replied Trevor. Now you'll see, Thomas. I'll soon show you what traction engines can do. Trevor was as good as his word. He dragged the pilings clear with chains and towed them into position. Who needs rails? He muttered cheerfully to himself. Later, Thomas brought Annie and Clarabel to visit him. Thomas was most impressed. Now I understand how useful a traction engine can be. The coaches were full of children. Trevor gave them rides along the harbour. He liked this best of all. He's very kind, said Annie. He reminds me of Thomas, added Clarabel. Everyone was sorry when it was time for Trevor to go. One morning, Percy was careless. I say, you engines, I'm to take some trucks to Thomas's junction. The fat controller chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. More likely he wants you out the way, grunted James. Gordon looked across to James. They were making a plan. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals, but then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. He came to a signal. Bother, it's at danger. The signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. Down means go, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know it's one of those backing signals. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested, and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained. Oh, dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they see us. He was too late. Gordon saw everything. (laughs) 
That night, the big engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was funny. Percy thought they were being very silly. The new engine arrived. What's your name? asked the fat controller. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck round. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. James, Gordon and Henry watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. We'll have some fun and order him about. <laughs> Smoke billowed everywhere. Percy was cross. Duck took no notice. They'll get tired of it soon. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? Yes, they do, answered Percy. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it later. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly, he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! <laughs> Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Gordon, James and Henry were furious. Stop that noise, bellowed the fat controller. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. Duck, explain this behaviour. Beg pardon, sir? But I'm a great Western engine. We do our work without fuss. But begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these um, engines that we only take orders from you. Silence! Snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. As for you, thundered the fat controller, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Doc is quite right. This is my railway and I give the orders. After Percy went away, Doc was left to manage alone. He did so, easily. When Thomas came back, Annie and Clarabel told him how well Doc had managed. Thomas was so pleased to be home that he soon forgot to be jealous. The works had left Thomas's handbrake very stiff. It made his brake seem as if they were hard on, when in fact they were not. As a result, he and his coaches often overran the platform. Thomas found this most embarrassing. Gradually, his driver and fireman learned to be extra careful. But one day, Thomas's fireman was ill, and a relief man took his place. The fireman had fastened the coupling and joined the driver and station master on the platform to wait for Henry's passengers. The fireman had forgotten all about Thomas's handbrake. Thomas simmered happily. Not long now, he thought, as he saw Henry slowly approaching. But Thomas's brakes were not hard on, and suddenly he felt his wheels begin to move. He tried to stop, but he couldn't without his driver and fireman. He tried to whistle a warning, but he couldn't do that either. The guard, driver, fireman and passengers were all stranded on the platform. Shrieked Danny and Clarabel, but Thomas, with plenty of steam, kept on going. The alarm went out down the line. Stop the runaway! There, ready for action, was Harold the helicopter. The 
Spectre had made a plan, and together they took off into the sky. At last, Thomas was tiring. I need to stop, I need to stop, he panted wearily. As they neared the next station, Thomas saw Harold land. They entered the platform slowly enough for the inspector to act. Judging his moment, the inspector scrambled into the cab and screwed the brake hard on. At last, Thomas stopped. Both he and the inspector were very relieved. Then they thanked Harold. Thomas was looking at a board on the quay. Danger! We mustn't go past it, he said. That's orders. Why? Danger means falling down something, said Thomas. I went past danger once and fell down a mine. I can't see a mine, said Percy. He didn't know that the foundations of the quay had sunk. The rails now sloped downward to the sea. Stupid board, said Percy. Percy made a plan. One day he whispered to the trucks, will you give me a bump when we get to the quay? The trucks had never been asked to bump an engine before. They giggled and chatted about it. Driver doesn't know my plan, chuckled Percy. On, 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 laughed the trucks. Percy thought they were helping. I'll pretend to stop at the station, but the trucks will push me past the board. Then I'll make them stop. I can do that whenever I like. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust trucks. Go on, go on, they yelled, and bumped Percy's driver and fireman off the footplate. Oh, said Percy, sliding past the board. Percy was frantic. That's enough. Percy was sunk. You are a very disobedient engine. Percy knew that voice. Please, sir, get me out, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir. No, Percy, we cannot do that till high tide. I hope it will teach you to obey orders. Yes, sir. It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. Next day, he was sent to the works on Henry's goods train. Well, 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 chuckled Henry. Did you like the water? No, I am surprised. You need more determination, Percy. Water's nothing to an engine with determination, you know. Perhaps you will like it better next time. Percy is quite determined that there won't be a next time.